Hello friends, so welcome to lecture series on matrix uh, analysis with applications. So, in today's lecture we will focus on Cali Hamilton theorem and minimal polynomial that what Cali Hamilton theorem is and how can you find the minimal polynomial using characteristic polynomial. So, what Cali Hamilton theorem states let us see, Cali Hamilton theorem states that every matrix A, every square matrix A is a root of its characteristic polynomial. Okay. So, what does it mean let us see, uh, we know that uh, uh, A x is equal to lambda x, we, we already discussed this thing that uh, where uh, x is uh, not equal to 0 and lambda is a corresponding uh, Eigen value. I mean if lambda is a corresponding Eigen uh, is an Eigen value then the corresponding Eigen vector is x. Okay. So, lambda is a Eigen value and x is a corresponding Eigen vector. This we have already discussed when we are uh, discussing uh, Eigen values and Eigen vectors. Now, from this we can easily see that A uh, minus lambda i times x equal to 0. Okay. Now, since x is not equal to 0, so this system of uh, linear equations has infinitely many solutions. It is, it is something like b x equal to 0, where x is not equal to 0. Uh, see for this system for this system of linear equations where b is a matrix of order n cross n this system equation if x is not equal to 0 means have infinitely many solutions and this will be having infinitely many solution only when determinant of b is equal to 0. So, here instead of b we are having a minus lambda i. So, this means since x is not equal to 0 this means uh, determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to 0. So, this means this expression determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 gives a polynomial in lambda and that polynomial in lambda is called characteristic polynomial. And what is the degree of that polynomial? The degree of that polynomial is the order of the matrix. Here, here I am taking order of matrix as n cross n. So, the degree of the polynomial of this will be simply of order n. So, suppose suppose a polynomial which we are getting uh, after opening this determinant is uh, lambda raised to power n minus c 1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 plus c 2 lambda raised to power n minus 2 and so on plus minus 1 raised to power n c n is equal to 0. Okay. So, this polynomial lambda this polynomial is called characteristic polynomial. Okay. So, how many how many roots this equation is having? This equation is having n number of roots. Suppose the roots are lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n. Roots may be distinct, roots may be real, roots may be complex, okay. some roots are equal, some are distinct anything. Now, we have, we have already discussed that sum of the eigenvalues is equal to trace of the matrix trace means sum of diagonal elements that is sum of over i sum of a i a 1 1 plus a 2 2 plus a 3 3 up to a n n okay. and i is varying from 1 to n. And this also we have discussed that product of Eigen values is nothing but determinant of a. Okay. Now, Kelly Hamilton theorem states that for if this is a characteristic polynomial of a matrix A, okay, then the, uh, my matrix always satisfies characteristic polynomial. That means, that means if if for a matrix A of order n cross n, the characteristic polynomial is determinant A minus lambda i is equal to zero, which is uh, equal to suppose lambda raised to power n minus c one, lambda raised to power n minus one c 2 lambda raised to power n minus 2 and so on plus minus 1 raised to power n c n is equal to 0. Then by Kalamantan theorem a raised to power n minus c 1 a raised to power n minus 1 plus c 2 a raised to power n minus 2 and so on plus minus 1 raised to power n uh, c n into identity should be 0, should be a 0 matrix or a null matrix. That means, if you have a characteristic polynomial corresponding to a matrix A, 
it always be satisfied by the matrix itself. That is the main statement of Calais and Hamilton theorem. Now, how can we prove it? How can we prove that a matrix uh, whose characteristic polynomial is given by suppose this expression, it will be satisfied by the matrix also. So, let us try to prove this result, uh, the proof of the Calais Hamilton theorem. You see, uh, for in order to prove, let us find a joint of A minus lambda i. Let us find a joint of A minus lambda i. You see, what is what is A matrix? Suppose A matrix is A11, A12, and so on up to A1n, A21, A22, and so on up to A2n, An1, and so on up to Ann. This is a n cross n matrix A. And what is A minus lambda i? A minus lambda i will be A11 minus lambda, A12, and so on A1n a 2 1 a 2 2 minus lambda and so on a 2 n and here a n 1 a n 2 and so on up to a n n minus lambda. This is a minus lambda i. Now, if you want to find out adjoint of this matrix a minus lambda i. So, how we will proceed? We first find cofactors of each element, take the transpose of the matrix found by the cofactors that will be the adjoint of that matrix. If suppose you want to find out the cofactor of this matrix, this element, the first element, you want to find out cofactor of this element, we leave this column, we leave this row and the determinant of n, n minus 1 cross n minus 1 uh, matrix will be the cofactor cross point to first element. Similarly, if you want to find out cofactor of A12 element say for example, then you leave this column and you leave this row and you find out the cofactor of determinant of the remaining matrix will be the cofactor of that particular element. With of course, uh, cofactor of uh, C i j is uh, minus 1 raised to power i plus j minor of i j that we already know. So, so what does it mean? It means that we want if you want to find out the cofactor of any element of this matrix say first element. So, it will be the highest power of lambda will be lambda raised to power n minus 1. You see you want if you see cofactor of this element then the uh, determinant of this will contain lambda raised to power n minus 1, not lambda raised to power n. If you want to find cofactor of this element, then the uh, uh, highest power of lambda will be lambda raised to power n minus 2. Okay. So, if you if you find cofactors of each and every element of this matrix, so this will be something like you can say that it is uh, b 1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 plus b 2 lambda raised to power n minus 2 and so on up to b n. Okay. This b 1, b 2 up to b n, they are the matrices itself. Okay. They are itself the matrices, they are here, here b 1, b 2 and so on up to b n are the matrices. Okay. Because, because when you write the determinant of this matrix, you open it it will contain lambda raised to power n minus 1 and the other power, other terms. Similarly, when you take the uh, cofactors of other element and so on, so you will get uh, lambda raised to power n minus 1 a matrix uh, B 1. Similarly, uh, lambda raised to power n minus 2 a matrix B 2 and so on up to B n. You can easily verify this result by taking a 3 cross 3 matrix. Uh, so, you will find that B 1, B 2 up to uh, B n in that case is are the matrices of order n cross n. Okay, of order n cross n. Now, <coughs> we know that uh, we also know that uh, a minus lambda i into a joint of a minus lambda i that means a into a joint of a. We already know it is equal to determinant of a times identity. Okay. So, this is a matrix into a joint of the matrix is equal to determinant of a minus lambda i into i this we already know. So, so you, you substitute uh, this expression over here. So, what you will get? What you will get? You see we are having a minus lambda i into a joint of a minus lambda i. We are taking it is equal to determinant of a minus lambda i times identity. This implies a minus lambda i 
this is we are assuming it is equals to b1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 b2 raised to power n minus 2 and so on up to bn is equals to determinant of now determinant of a minus lambda i is uh, is we already know that it is uh, lambda raised to power n minus c1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 and so on up to minus 1 raised to power n into c n times identity. This we have already assumed that the uh, determinant of this matrix is uh, lambda raised to power n minus c1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 and so on minus 1 raised to power n c n times identity. Now, let us compare the coefficient from both the sides you see what is the coefficient of lambda raised to power n from here and here when you multiply these two uh, brackets then lambda raised to power n will be minus b1 from this into this itself okay and that must be equal to i from here now lambda raised to power n minus 1 lambda raised to power n minus 1 when you multiply this with this element so it is a b1 and this with this i mean this element with the second element of this uh, bracket that is minus of b2 that will be equal to lambda raised to power n minus 2 uh, from here c1 times identity similarly if you similarly if you take the uh, lambda raised to power 0 from here so lambda raised to power 0 will be this into this that is uh, bn into a from here and no other term and that will be equal to minus 1 raised to power n c n times identity now uh, now you multiply the first equation by a raised to power n the second equation by a raised to power n minus 1 the last equation with uh, identity and you add them when you multiply this by a raised to power n multiply this by a raised to power n minus 1 then it will become a into a raised to power n minus 1 will become a raised to power n into b1 so these two will cancel out now similarly when you multiply b2 with this element this will be minus a raised to power n minus 1 into b2 which will be cancelled from the next uh, expression term in the next expression and similar last expression will be cancelled from the uh, second last one okay so when you add them uh, when you add them it we obtain uh, a raised to power n minus c1 a raised to power n minus 1 plus c2 a raised to power n minus 2 and so on plus minus 1 raised to power n c n times identity will be equal to c. So, hence we have obtained hence we obtained this result which states that I mean which uh, tells us that characteristic polynomial will be satisfied by the matrix itself. So, hence we got the proof of the Kelly Hamilton theorem. So, suppose we are having this problem now matrix A for uh, simplicity we have taken an example of 2 cross 2 similarly we can go for 3 cross 3 or higher orders. Now, let us suppose A is this matrix ok we have to verify Kelly-Winton theorem and hence find A inverse adjoint of A and A raised to power 6. Now, what is A here A is you see A is uh, 2 minus 2 minus 2 and 5 first we will find out the characteristic polynomial of this matrix A and from there we will try to verify Kelly-Winton theorem. So, what is the characteristic polynomial determinant of A minus lambda i is equal to 0 is a characteristic polynomial. So, this implies determinant of 2 minus lambda minus 2 minus 2 5 minus lambda determinant should be 0. So, this implies 2 minus lambda into 5 minus lambda minus 4 should be 0 this implies lambda square this is minus 7 lambda plus 10 minus uh, 4 is plus 10 minus 4 is plus 6 equal to 0. So, this is the characteristic polynomial of uh, uh, this uh, matrix A. Now, what from Kelly-Menten theorem from Kelly-Menten theorem uh, we must have A square minus 7 A plus 6 I should be 0 this we have to verify in order to verify you simply take left hand side left hand side is a square minus 7 a plus 6 i and we have to show that it is equal to null matrix. So, first find a square what is a square a square is 2 minus 2 minus 2 5 into a itself 2 minus 2 minus 2 5 
when you multiply these two this row this column it is 4 plus 4 is 8 this row this column minus 4 minus 10 minus 14 this row this column minus 4 minus 10 minus 14 this row this column is 4 plus 10 is 14. Now you, you now let us try to find this expression a square minus 7 a plus 6 i which is 8 minus 14 minus 14 14 minus 7 times a you multiply this with 7 so it is it will be 14 minus 14 minus 14 uh, 7 5 it is 35 7 into 5 is 35 plus 6 i that is 6 0 0 6. Now, 8 plus 6 is 14 and 14 minus 14 is 0. Similarly, minus 14 and plus 14 is 0, minus 14 plus 14 is 0 and it is 14, uh, 14 plus 6, 14 plus 6 is 20. So, let us, uh, let us again verify this thing, it is this row, this column that is 4 plus 25. Okay. So, here, here we have a doubt, here is a correction, you see this element it is 4 this row this column that is 4 plus 25 is 29. Okay. So, this element is 29. Now, 29 plus 6 is 35 and 35 minus 35 is 0. So, it is 0 0 0 0. So, it is a non matrix 0. Okay. So, hence we have hence this uh, the, uh, Kalamantan theorem is verified. Now, we have to find out inverse of A using Kalamantan theorem. So, how we will find that? So, for this matrix we have seen that a square minus 7 a plus 6 i is equal to 0, this we have obtained by Kelly-Hamilton theorem. Now, now what is the, what is the determinant of uh, determinant of the matrix? Determinant of the matrix is simply a product of eigenvalues and product of eigenvalues is simply given by the last term upon first term that is 6, that is a determinant. So, determinant is not equal to 0, this means uh, inverse exist. Now, first we have to get the insurety that uh, inverse exist and for inverse to be exi to exist uh, matrix must be uh, invertible, I mean non singular for that determinant must be non zero and from here the product of eigenvalue is 6. So, we can say that determinant is not equal to 0. So, A inverse exist. Now, how to find A inverse? Now, since A inverse exists and A satisfies this equation by Kalamantan theorem, so we can multiply both the sides or we can operate both the sides by A inverse. So, let us operate both the sides by A inverse, it is 0, A inverse into A square is A minus 7 times identity plus 6 times A inverse should be 0. Now, this implies A inverse will be you can put all the other terms on left hand side, it is uh, 7 i minus a. Okay. Now, what is a? a is given to us as it is 2 minus 2 minus 2 5. So, what is 7 i minus a? 7 i minus a will be 7 0 0 7 minus a, a is 2 minus 2 minus 2 5 and this will be 5 to 0 plus 2 is 2 it is again 2 as 7 minus 2 is 2. So, this A inverse will be 1 sixth of this matrix that is 5 2 2 2. So, this will be the inverse of this matrix. Now, next is we have to find out adjoint of A. Now, we know that A inverse is adjoint of A upon determinant of A. So, this implies adjoint of A will be A inverse times determinant of A. Now, determinant of A is 6 that we have already uh, um, shown. So, it is 6 into A inverse and A inverse is this expression. So, 6 is will cancel out. So, adjoint of uh, this matrix will be simply this matrix. Now, next we have to find out A raised to power 6 for the same problem. Okay. Now, uh, by Kalamantan theorem, the characteristic polynomial is this. Okay, a square uh, minus 7 i plus uh, 6 i equal to 0 and we have to find a raised to power 6. So, it is very easy to find out using this expression you see a square is 7 a minus 6 i. You can find a cube by multiplying both sides by a 
it is 7a square minus 6a 7 times. Now, a square again you substitute this value it is 7a minus 6i minus 6a it is equal to now 42 minus 6 42 minus 6 is uh, 36 a minus 42 i ok ok it is 49 it is 49 minus 6 ok. So, it is uh, 49 minus 6 is uh, 43 it is 43 a minus 42 i. Similarly, you can now multiply again you can multiply by a both the sides. So, it is, so it is a raised to power 4 43 a square minus 42 a. So, 43 a square a square is again 7 a minus 6 i from this expression minus 42 a you can simplify this and again you can multiply by a raised to power 5 I mean a both the sides and substitute a square from this expression and finally, a raised to power 6 ok. So, finally, you will get a expression of a raised to power 6 of this form some alpha raised to power a plus beta raised to power i some expression of this form where alpha and beta can be computed by the uh, by successive uh, computation. Then you can substitute a because you know the value, uh, matrix a and the identity you already know you can easily find out a raised to power 6 ok. And the other way out is you can uh, using Cal Hamilton theorem it is like uh, you are you might be seeing that for a 2 cross 2 matrix either you can multiply uh, a by uh, 6 times a square then a cube then a raised to power 4 a raised to power 5 and then a raised to power 6. But if it is a larger matrix of order say 10 cross 10 then finding a raised to power 6 is a difficult task. So, but by the Kalamantan theorem using Kalamantan theorem it is easy to find out. So, this is the main importance of Kalamantan theorem to find out the higher powers of a to find out a inverse adjoint of a and other things about the matrix a. Now, what is monic polynomial? A polynomial f x given by f x equals to a raise to power a n x raise to power n plus a n minus 1 x raise to power n minus 1 and so on up to a naught is said to be monic if the leading coefficient is 1. If this leading coefficient which is a coefficient of highest power of this polynomial is 1 then this polynomial is called monic polynomial ok. Now, what do you mean by minimal polynomial? Let T be a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space V then there exists a unique monic polynomial of minimum degree m t x such that m t t v equal to 0 for all v in v. Then this m t v is called minimal polynomial of t. So, what does it mean basically? Suppose, suppose a is a matrix of order say 4 cross 4 ok and its characteristic polynomial is suppose lambda minus 1 whole square lambda minus 2 lambda minus 3. Of course, if it is of order 4 cross 4, so the degree of the characteristic polynomial will be 4. So, it will be having 4 roots suppose all the 4 roots are real. So, roots are roots of I mean characteristic roots are or the eigenvalues of this matrix are suppose 1 1 2 3. So, so what is the uh, uh, characteristic polynomial? This is a characteristic polynomial of uh, this matrix A, and by the Kalamantan theorem, we can easily say that A minus i whole square into A minus 2i into A minus 3i, this should be 0. Because by the Kalamantan theorem, matrix uh, satisfies characteristic polynomial. So, hence this will be also this will also be equal to 0. Now, minimal polynomial is the lowest degree polynomial uh, for which which is to be satisfied by the matrix itself. You see uh, what is the degree of this polynomial? Degree of polynomial is 4 ok. The important property of minimal polynomial is it contains all the different roots ok. It contains all the different roots. The different roots are 1, 2 and 3. So, minimal polynomial will always contain lambda minus 1, lambda minus 2 and lambda minus 3 at least ok. All the irreducible roots it will be having 
the minimal polynomial. So, so either it is either it is this polynomial which is a lowest degree polynomial which may be the lowest degree polynomial and, is, and uh, A is be satisfied in, uh, in this expression or it will be characteristic polynomial itself. I mean I, I want to say that uh, matrix A will be satisfied by either this or this. For this, it is for this it is obviously true, because by the Kalamantan theorem. But we need a polynomial which is of lowest degree, so it may be this polynomial also. So for this polynomial, we have to check whether A is at A is satisfying this expression or not. If A is satisfying this expression, so this will be the minimal polynomial. Otherwise, this is the minimal polynomial which is uh, of course be satisfied by A by the Kalamantan theorem. Okay. So, minimal polynomial has an important property number 1 it is of lowest degree polynomial uh, which is satisfied by the matrix itself. It contains all the irreducible factors all the linear factors which the characteristic polynomial is having. Okay. Now, suppose you want to find out uh, a, a minimal polynomial corresponding to a matrix A how we will proceed. So, let us discuss it by an example. Suppose you are having the first problem 2002. 2002. So, what is the uh, characteristic polynomial of uh, this matrix? This, which means determinant 2 minus lambda 0, 0, 2 minus lambda should be 0, or it implies 2 minus lambda whole square is equal to 0. So, this is the characteristic polynomial of this matrix A. How many uh, roots it is having? Only two roots, both are equal, lambda equal to 2, 2. Okay. Now, the minimal polynomial is a lowest degree polynomial contains all the irreducible roots, all the linear roots, all the different roots, distinct roots. Okay. So, so, that means the uh, minimal polynomial will be either 2 minus lambda or 2 minus lambda square it is either having 2 minus lambda or itself this this is will be always satisfied by the matrix itself by the Kalamantan theorem. So, we have to check whether this is be satisfied by the um, matrix or not if it is satisfied the matrix that means it is a minimal polynomial. So, this means we have to check that 2 i minus uh, a should should be 0 or sh uh, it is not 0 let us see. So, so, 2 i is 2 0 0 2 and a is simply of course, the same thing. So, it is comes out to be a null matrix that means that means this uh, this expression this expression satisfying mat, uh, satisfying by the matrix A that means a minimal polynomial of uh, cross for this matrix is lambda 2 minus lambda ok it is of degree 1 not 2. So, the minimal polynomial of this matrix is 2 minus lambda. Now, let us take the second example to see whether it is uh, what is the minimal polynomial of this. So, second example is you see a is a here is 3 1 0 0 3 0 0 0 4. It is the upper triangular matrix you can easily see upper triangular matrix and the in case of upper triangular matrix eigenvalues are simply the diagonal elements. So, what are eigenvalues of this matrix these are 3 3 and 4. And if you know the eigenvalues, you can simply find out this characteristic polynomial, which is lambda minus 3 whole square into lambda minus 4. That is e that we can easily see. So, characteristic polynomial of uh, this uh, matrix A will be nothing but lambda minus 3 whole square into lambda minus 4. Now, we have to see what is the minimal polynomial of this matrix A. So, to see the minimal polynomial of this matrix A, minimal polynomial is lowest degree polynomial which is satisfied by the matrix itself. So, either it is so minimal polynomial of this matrix is either lambda minus 3 into lambda minus 4 or lambda minus 3 whole square into lambda minus 4 equal 0 because it contain all the uh, different uh, roots all the distinct roots 
all the factors having distinct roots. So, this is obviously satisfied because by the Kalamantan theorem. Let us see whether it is satisfied or not. If it is satisfied, then this will be the minimal polynomial of this matrix A. So, we have to see basically that A minus 3 i into A minus 4 i. What is the expression this? Let us see. What is A minus 3 i? It is 0, 1, 0, it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4. And what is A minus 4 i? It is a minus 3 i is uh, 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 and 0 0 1 okay? because you are multiplying this you are uh, subtracting 3 with each tiny elements. Now, a minus 4 i will be minus 1 z, minus 1 1 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0. Now, what is the product of these two? You multiply this with this 0 you multiply this with this is minus 1. If one element is non 0 if one element comes out to be non zero this means it is not equal to a null matrix and if it is not equal to null matrix that means this cannot be the minimal polynomial so what is the minimal polynomial then the minimal polynomial will be the this expression this will be the minimal polynomial of this so in this way we can find out the minimal polynomial of a matrix a okay so, basically uh, if, if I have I am having a matrix A of order say 5 cross 5 and the characteristic polynomial is suppose lambda minus 1 whole raise to power 3 into lambda minus 2 into lambda plus 3 suppose is equal to 0. Then the minimal polynomial of uh, this uh, I mean for this matrix A cross this characteristic polynomial may be. So, what are the cases we have to check? For minimal polynomial we have to check this product whether it is 0 or not this product whether it is 0 or not and this product this is of course, 0 by the Kelly Hamilton theorem. So, if these two are not equal to 0, so the matrix characteristic polynomial itself is a minimal polynomial, okay. but we have to check for these two also whether these are 0 or not. Okay. So, first we will check for this if it is equal to 0. So, this is the least lowest degree polynomial which is satisfied by the matrix otherwise we check for this if these two are not equal to 0 then the characteristic polynomial itself will be the minimal polynomial. Okay. So, what are properties of minimal polynomial? The minimal polynomial empty of a matrix A divides every polynomial that has A as a 0 that is empty divides the characteristic polynomial of A. So, always minimal polynomial divides its characteristic polynomial. Okay. Number 2 it has the characteristic polynomial the minimal polynomial of matrix A has the same irreducible factors which we have discussed. And number 3 a scalar lambda is the eigenvalue of a matrix A if and only if lambda is a root of a minimal polynomial of A also. So, if uh, uh, lambda is the eigenvalue it is also it is always a root of minimal polynomial also. So, these are some of the important properties of minimal polynomial. So, in this lecture we have seen that that uh, how we can find out characteristic uh, polynomial I mean uh, how we can uh, see uh, and see the advantage or the applications of Kelly Hamilton theorem. How can you find out minimal polynomial cross point to a matrix A? Okay. In the next few lectures, we will see some of the important properties of or important advantage of minimal polynomial. So, thank you.